Maybe I will not introduce Jacques Roubaud. I uh, rather introduce myself introducing Jacques Roubaud. Um, Antoine Vitesse, who was maybe the last great French theater pro producer, used to say that it is an illusion to imagine that you could have an illimited number of interpretations about a character in a play. In fact, he said that there were two or three distinct ways of interpreting it no more. I would say the same about the possible relations between philosophy and poetry. According to me, three main positions exist. At least two of them were of great consequences about philosophy itself. I want to speak, of course, of the Platonic one and of the Heideggerian one. At least twice, philosophy decided about what thinking is, what truth is, and what politics should be in a tight face-to-face -face with poetry. Some words about this point. As you know, maybe the relationship between poetry and philosophy is inaugural for philosophy. Pre-Platonician philosophers like Parmenides are poets. Their philosophy expresses itself through a poem. Whereas the true inventor of philosophy, Plato, banishes poets from his republic. The inaugural link between poetry and philosophy is conflictual. Philosophy establishes its own discursivity through its separation from poetry. Plato's conflict with poets is both ontological and political. First of all, he affirms that poetry has no ontological capacity. Ontology for Plato is a matter of objects and idea of the object, of appearances and essences. To reach the idea and depart from the appearances, philosophy has to produce a discursive method inspired by mathematical demonstrations. That is why Plato ask, asks everybody who wants to learn philosophy, to do philosophy, to be first a geometer. Mathematics are a propedeutics for philosophy, while poetry is, according to him, an obstacle to philosophy. According to Plato, poetry is Poetry works with the appearances of the objects. It never passes from the object to the ideas of the object. It never reaches the ideas. It only imitates the appearances. And appearances are misleading, deceitful. They belong to the world of opinions. They let people live in a world of mistakes. Poetry is made of simulacra, false imitations of being, always according to Plato, of course. This ontological weakness of poetry is also the reason why, according to Plato, poets cannot have any political function. They would govern without having any true knowledge. They are on the side of sophists, Nobody can entrust them with the question of justice, as nobody can entrust them with the question of truth. You see the importance of the point. Philosophy begins through a violent rupture with poetry. And the rupture is all the more violent because Plato himself needs to make use of the resources of the poem. When he uses, for instance, the metaphor of the sun in the myth of the cave. Why does he need to make use of poetry? 
in these essential points of his demonstrative way, because beyond all ideas of the object, beyond, beyond ideal objectivity, there is what Plato called the good of the one, which is not an idea, which is, according to Plato's expression, beyond substance, beyond ideal being there. Are this one and this good not subtracted from intelligible objectivity? And even if they can be thought, is it not impossible, in fact, to know them? To sum up, in order to pass beyond the givenness of being as it occurs in accordance with the experience of objects, discursivity is insufficient. The great disobjectifying operations of the poem are required. Nevertheless, this quarrel and this rupture between philosophy and poetry are constitutive of philosophy itself, and the rupture will last a long time. Heidegger is the first philosopher who reverses the verdict and reopens philosophy to poetry. Or rather, he deeply modifies the relationship between philosophy and poetry. And poetry. As he put it somewhere, poets and philosophers are living near on separate mountains. Heidegger's vision is that philosophy has to put an end to metaphysics, which has been initiated by Plato. He, criti he criticizes the metaphysical dualism of appearance and essence, object and idea of the object, and propounds a new vision of being as pure givenness. According to him, metaphysics has organized the forgetting of being behind the Platonist division between object and idea, and only poetry would have maintained a true vision of being. Poetry, according to him, would have been the shelter of being against its metaphysical forgetting. You see how Heidegger is uh, reversing here Plato's vision of poetry. According to him, poetry has an eminent ontological capacity. Poetic language is what expresses being, or rather, poems are the places where being as pure givenness as presence is hidden. Metaphysics is for him the name of a whole historical period of thought to which being demands now to pass beyond its concealment and to open a new age of thought in which philosophy has to think what it is, what is, sorry, has to think what is at stake in the poem. One can say that to have reopened the importance of poetry for philosophy is Heidegger's singularity. Yet the limit of Heidegger's attempt to reopen philosophy to poetry is that poetry becomes a place for philosophy itself. Philosophy has to tell what, according to him, poetry would think but could not tell. Poetry needs thinkers to decipher what it contains without knowing that it contains it. So poetry here is subordinate to an external thought. Poetry for, for Heidegger is something like an unconscious thought, an unconscious thought of being. While philosophy in, is in a way reduced to be the thought of, of what is at stake in poetry. <clears throat> 